resolution in the situation that he has. I'm sorry, you're raising your hand. No, we got a question back here next. Oh, okay. I do not believe in any pathway to citizenship for anybody that came here illegally. And I would enforce that to my dying breath. The minute you give somebody a pathway to citizenship that came here illegally, you are just opening up the future of the same people coming here, having children because they know they're going to become citizens. That doesn't work. That's just, does it, it's just not common sense. We've got to give them green cards. They haven't been here. Uh, you know, they didn't come here on their own volition, but I will never, ever agree with that one. It's just not in my field. Next question. This question is mostly addressed to me. Uh, how does Mary Taylor feel about assembling governors of 35% to hold a convention to get the power away from the uh, government and back to the states. So, I've only heard Mary answer that question one time, uh, and that basically her answer is, uh, there's a lot of activity on the George Soros side to actually try and also generate that effort of the Convention of States. That's right. So, she said, I'm not sure was her answer, and I want to understand it more before I commit. And honestly, I'm five weeks in. I've been boning up on the state budget, but I haven't checked that one out yet. So I'm not trying to dodge it. I just don't know. But that's what I heard her say is, I want a lot more information to make sure before we, sh we start tampering with our U.S. Constitution. Now that said, uh, I was on the board of the Alliance Defending Freedom for seven years. The Alliance Defending Freedom is kind of the chief global legal organization fighting against the ACLU to defend religious freedom, life, and family. And the head of ADF is now Michael Ferris, who was leading the Convention of States before that. Michael hasn't talked to me about it either, but I do know someone to call if we really need to get into it once we're governor and lieutenant governor. So we would check it out thoroughly for sure, sir. Sir, I'm concerned that our public schools have become uh, indoctrination camps for the public, uh, for the progressive left. Uh, as a taxpayer, my concern is that the children get a good education, reading, writing, and arithmetic, the basics if they will. Um, and I don't really care whether they get that in a public school, a public school, a charter school, or home school. And I personally think that mom and dad are the best ones to make that decision. And I would be interested in any of these comments on that subject. I'm sure we'll all comment and we'll try and keep it quick. Uh, again, it starts in, in Ohio with Indian Common Core, okay? HB 176 rips, rip, rips it up by the roots, okay? Returning power back to the local school districts and school boards is really the principle that we would run. I mean, Mary Taylor has gone so far as to say we're not exactly sure what the State Department of Education needs to do. And where we really need to focus education is on two tracks. One, if you want to go to college, we've lost our mind on testing. We need to simplify it. If you want to go to college, it's a minimum GPA and ACT score, quite simply. It measures reading, writing, and arithmetic. Okay, a little science well. Okay? And or trade certification. It has to come back. Speaking as a guy trying to hire welders and machinists for the last four years, it's what's holding businesses back. There's, there's jobs available over in Hamilton for welders, $150,000 a year, if anyone knows how to weld and is interested, okay? So there are lots of very fine jobs that quite frankly are high tech jobs in advanced manufacturing available for, for students that want to go the trade route and we need to start encouraging that in all aspects of education. Finally, what Mary and I have talked about is firewall for parents, protecting them from government because ultimately they need to make that choice. If you want to hear more about that, there's an article out there. I spoke at the Hamilton County Courthead Steps the other day about this issue where a young girl was taken from her parents by a judge because Children's Hospital has decided that she needs transgender therapy and wants to administer it, and her parents said no. Okay? We don't know the details of the case. The principle is horrible, right? We, we have to defend parents' rights to educate their kids and teach them their values. 
the way that they want to, or we lose all, all fabric in our society. I didn't stick to my short answer, I'm sorry. <laughs> Local control schools, period. I shut down the Department of Education tomorrow. That's what we got to do. We have a secondary education right now that I kind of like. She's pretty much shutting down the Department of Education. And that's exactly what somebody has to do, is go in there and get themselves out of a job. And she's going to try to do that. What I do. We've got to start forcing our Constitution. And the only way to do that is put Supreme Court justices in, in that are going to actually interpret it the way it was originally written. And the only way to do that is elect senators to believe in. And I'm one of those senators. And uh, by the way, local control schools is great, unless you're in Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a progressive mayor and a progressive school board, and they're trying to do the same thing that you're talking about. If they don't perform, take it away from them and put it back at the state level where Republicans control what, what the program's going to be. And, you know, it, it's, I'm pretty hardcore on this stuff, but we had better wake up. And the only way to do it is elect people like me to the U.S. Senate. Well, that was a good response, but. Out of all the United States Senate candidates running, I was the only U.S. candidate currently running on the Republican ticket that actually went down and met with the radical left OEA. That's the Ohio Education Association. So for me, it's not a campaign talking point, and I use the story of my own life. I am not formally educated with a college degree. However, I was a young executive in my early 20s because as I said in my speech, I had the opportunity to take homeschooling classes my senior year and to build a life for myself through hard work. Every candidate was invited to the opportunity to go down and go toe to toe with the OEA. I went down by myself. At the time, I didn't have a briefcase, but I had a diaper bag on my back. And I did an entire presentation talking to them specifically. Now, in human resources, I was responsible for the labor and job market. So I understand it intimately and very, very close. And as a private citizen, I actually met with members of Governor Kasich's administration to talk about the skills gaps and the deficiencies that we have county by county. When I went down to meet with the Democratic arm of the OEA, I used my life and said, here's the issue. We are only offering traditional academia in the form of a college pathway. Here is the problem. People are walking away with insurmountable amounts of debts that happen to be government debt, and then they're not able to go out and get a job. So let's come back to the real world again. Let's take me as a case study, and I want to show you where we have the ability to put in vocational schools, skills trades programs, as well as getting apprenticeship programs and real life skills back into the school place again. And you might just end up with somebody like me who's actually employable when they graduate from high school. So again, Big difference between most folks and me, I was actually working on these initiatives as a private citizen. This is not a campaign talking point because I recognize that our schools are radicalizing our children. You know it, I know it, it's happening in our universities, and the only way that you are going to be able to go up against democratic organizations like the OEA is to have some skin in the game and to be able to say, no, we draw a line in the sand, parents choice, homeschooling options, and that we have skills, apprenticeship programs, and vocational schools again. Let me go one step further. The teachers unions are controlling our schools. And a lot of the leftist stuff that they're learning is being pushed by these people. You know, we probably don't have a lot of pictures of Franklin Delano Roosevelt back Warren. He wasn't a uh, conservative. But even he didn't believe in the existence of public unions. We're about to have a we're about to have a Supreme Court ruling that may indeed have some effect on that. But I can tell you this, I would want somebody that I would vote on going to the Supreme Court that would vote for the elimination of public unions. How can somebody that's working for the government, that's going to fund the, the people that are going to give them raises and allow them to do what they want, 
in business, that would be a conflict of interest and would be unacceptable, but not for the public unions. So I can tell you this, I don't believe in public unions. I'm a right to work guy. And I believe that anybody, anybody should have the right not to join the union. And I came from a union family. And by the way, when, when those people passed away in my life, my grandfather, my father, they believe the same thing. They've seen what's happened. We've got to have radical change or we're in trouble. I want to bring radical change. And you know the difference between Mike Gibbons and, and at least one of the other candidates is that I don't really care about being reelected. Because the decisions that are made once a senator gets into office are based on how that person gets reelected. I'd like to find somebody, maybe Nathan, that has the same beliefs that I have, that I can help get elected at the end of my term. Our founders did not I'm believe have to you. Cut this off. We, got, we got more questions than okay, what I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll we'll watch you out by nine. Okay, so everybody in the room is sniffing the same uh, fumes. We, we all, I think, agree on the same principles. How, what is your strategy to overcome the half of the country that looks for a free ride? What are you going to tell them that's going to pull them away from the free ride? Well, short, short answer. Short answer? Mm -hmm. well, they got to work. <laughs> no more free rides. Medicaid, work. Pay for it. But now, you're not going to get their vote if, you t if they're getting it for free now and now you're <laughs> telling them the solution is they have to work. They're not going to vote for me. I know that. I think Romney talked about that and got in a lot of trouble. Uh, we, we have got to change our whole view of the government. Well, honestly, I'd say. It's been since Ronald Reagan, since we had a national conservative leader who explained conservative principles in a way that the population could actually understand and embrace them. As a young man, I watched Ronald Reagan and Jack Kemp do that. We need leaders like that again who bring winsomeness, who talk about the values in a way that are attractive. It's not that single moms want to continue to live in poverty without a husband. It's because the federal government has incented them to do so. Eliminate the penalties for marriage, eliminate the penalties to avoid work, we can change the policies and articulate the reasons why. It's the only way is if we talk in a winsome way that is attractive and explain why we believe what we believe is the right solution for people, because that's what I believe. This is real quick. I worked on this, again, as a private citizen. The federal level TANF policy currently that's produced and it came under the Clinton administration, it was worse for the, the state of Ohio, that is the policy that dictates our state's effectiveness. So I've already met with the governor's administration. I met with the head of Medicaid, and I met with the head of Job and Family Services. I prepared a 16-page document for them with real case studies with my business and what we were seeing trending in the private sector as to why people wouldn't increase their hours over 20 hours per week. And it's because the entitlement systems have become far too advantageous. The first thing that came out of the governor's administration when I sat down after giving them a 16-page document is, she said to me, I just want you to know you're not crazy. It's the federal level TANF policy that dictates the state's effectiveness. Bills have been introduced by multiple members in the House. You do not have the appropriate people in the Senate getting behind those bills to actually make change. Put somebody like me who's actually sat in a welfare office and understands the programs in and out, not just because I'm running for the United States Senate, and we'll get these things back in check again and get the bills produced and, and passed through that we need to. One more quick question. Uh, the question I have is how are you going to get the name recognition in the state to win the election? Very hard to do. Um, we are very strategic with our commercial media ad buys and we've been extremely effective at how we are getting across the state. We're doing events like this. I'm sure Mike is the same way. You just keep pushing and then the good folks that are in this room, you're, you're going to tell your friends and their friends are going to tell their friends. So between that and raising fundraising for commercial media ad buys. I'm going to spend a boatload of money. <laughs> There's no other way to do it. 
Our answer is you. Tell your friends who Mike DeWine is, remind them. Tell them about Mary Taylor. Mary Taylor's got a pretty good name ID. Not as good as Mike DeWine, but with your help, there's only 825,000 people who are going to vote in this Republican primary. Mike DeWine and John Houston can spend all their money buying eyeballs at a cost of $20 million when they run it across Ohio. And we're going to narrow cast through you, through digital ads, and through very targeted TV against the folks like you who are going to turn out and make the difference in this primary. Please help us. Go check your uh, Google it or whatever, but a Veritas poll came out today for all the statewide races. And uh, I can tell you the Senate race, they only came up with 21% of people, unde people undecided. So uh, go check that out. Thank you for being here tonight. <laughs> Great slate panel. Thank you. Yeah,